the stringers have been on for 24 hours or so and what's really interesting is that the neck is absolutely dead straight to the point of uh, actually being a slight problem with how straight it is. I can barely see any relief at all. There's a fraction of relief from the fretboard perspective. On the actual frets themselves, um, it's a similar deal. You know, this is a 10,000th uh, feeder gauge and there's, there's just nothing. So I think realistically, what we're gonna to need to do, because I, I can't level, I can't adjust the truss rod. So what I'm gonna do is relieve the tension, which will cause a little bit of back bow, and um, which will cause a sort of a hump roughly here. And I'm gonna level the frets with that in there, such that when I then put tension on, uh, there'll be a little dip there, and all being well, uh, it should be around the, the ten thousandths of release that we're looking for. Did I say release or relief? Relief. We're looking for a relief, not a release. So basically what I'm trying to do is uh, establish where we're currently at with this, like uh, before I do anything like you know, taking the neck off, um, just to make sure that it all goes back as expected and I know exactly what I'm dealing with. And something that's interesting, if you look here, you'll notice that the there is less gap between the base string and the edge of the fretboard than the treble sides. And, and what that tells us is either uh, the bridge is slightly off, off center or uh, the neck is angled slightly that way. Um, and that's not a problem because we're gonna take the neck off and we can adjust for that. Uh, but it's certainly interesting to note and uh, what I did off camera was just run a straight edge along here and put a mark where it's sitting just to see if it kind of sat evenly and it definitely confirmed that something is, is off slightly. So what I think I'll do uh, is make some measurements to just make sure that you know the bridge which is coming off anyway uh, is definitely uh, central on the guitar and if it is central on the guitar then we know we just need to make a, a quick adjustment on the neck it's kind of just an out of interest thing because it's it's so minor that we can just compensate with a few extra strokes when when resetting this neck now this is something that again uh, Ted Woodford of Woodford Instruments um, mentioned in a recent video I think it was recent I watched it recently therefore it's recent um, which was that Martin's bass uh, side is always slightly sharp you know once you get to the sort of 12th fret and beyond um, and I've, I've sort of measured up uh, per the Stumac uh, fret position calculator which is a really really uh, great free resource that they have on their website and the, the sort of point at which the base or the break point on the saddle should be is actually behind where this saddle is. Now, uh, you know, that was a, a factory thing with Martin and we're not about to change that. Um, but it's interesting to note anyway. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting this all sanded down so it doesn't look so terrible. It kind of looks somewhere between like a, uh, you know, a new guitar that's being built and um, a guitar that's been very badly finished. Now, working on the basis that the guitar is perfectly symmetrical, which it probably isn't, but you know, let's work on that basis. Uh, you can see that my ruler is right on the, uh, the corner is right on the edge of the binding and at the bridge, we're just at about 100 mil, okay? Give or take fractions of a millimeter. Now, if we just slide on over, let's say go to 300 on the bridge here, let's say about that, uh, and then we come over here, I would say maybe it's a millimetre less, maybe, but who knows, that could be, this is a millimetre, uh, you know, shorter or longer, sorry, uh, than this side. Um, it could be that the body is slightly out of symmetry by a millimetre, you know, it's not really scientific. Does it sort of tie in with what we're talking about? Uh, a little bit actually. Um, the bass uh, string is definitely closer 
than the treble string to this so you know it could contribute to it am i about to move the bridge to compensate no the bridge will go back exactly where it should be and will compensate with a bit of jiggery pokery on the neck reset the next thing i want to do is get this fret out because that's going to need to come out to do this neck reset so what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of heat into there and we're going to very delicately take this out came out pretty cleanly with very minimal, very minimal uh, tear out. So the next thing we want to do is drill two holes, one there, one there, with a nice long two mil drill bit, which I bought specifically for this job. Just making sure I'm not going to send this through the back of the guitar. The good news is that that definitely went down into a void, which tells us that we're in the right spot. So we'll do a similar thing here. Again, straight into that void. Cool. So before we can uh, ease the neck off, we just have to loosen this fretboard extension. So that fretboard extension is now off. Off camera, I made a, a jig for doing the, uh, the neck reset. You will of course be familiar with this jig if you are into guitar building and stuff. Uh, they are commercially available, they're just expensive and uh, you know, I thought I'd make one. So we're going to very delicately slide this on here. Now essentially what this does is puts gentle and measured upward pressure on the heel. That's looking good. So just flip it over carefully and we put this piece of wood there and there and that just stops these from sort of pulling out that way. Oh, look at that Brazilian rosewood, so nice. What I've got here is sort of a, a cut off like furniture leg that's got a, a ball bearing on it or a, a you know a ball uh, socket because heels are uh, rarely ever flat which is the case uh, with this one so it's actually sort of on a on an angle so it, it allows you to get a good amount of sort of footing on there um, and essentially what we're going to do is there's a nut here and we're just going to tighten that and it will give a bit of downward pressure or upward pressure more to the point on the heel. So now that we've uh, loosened the fretboard extension and we've got our, our neck removal jig in place, what I'm going to do is switch our little heat sticks on just so they start warming up. Now these are basically um, foam cutters, all of the notable YouTube luthiers are, are, are converting to these because they're so sort of clean and easy. Um, I had to modify these ever so slightly because they crimped the ends which made them bigger than the two mils that the rest of the, uh, the sort of shaft is so I just sort of um, modified that a little bit just so that it was all two mil 
Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a little bit of water down in here just to ease things. You know, this should be hot hide glue. We'll stick one mil in each, I think. It should be hot hide glue. Uh, therefore, a bit of water is going to help things nicely. So we'll stick that one in there. And we'll stick that one in there. And we'll leave that going for a little bit. I think the reason the heat sticks are so good is because, um, you know, they do get really hot, hot enough to, to melt solder. So let's say 300 degrees or something like that, maybe 350. Um, but they do it really slowly. You know, these power supplies are only 15 watts. You know, so, so it's a pretty gradual heat, you know, and it hasn't scorched the wood thus far, which is really good. Um, the hole is significantly smaller than that of the heat stick, which is also really good. We're about uh, 15 minutes into the heating process, and even though it hasn't done the sort of dramatic pop-off, what you will notice uh, is that the fretboard is now sitting notably higher you know, there's a, let's say, two or three mil gap there. So I actually think this is happening and it's happening nice and slowly. I feel like I can see it happening in real time, to be honest with you. Oh uh, yeah, that neck is, that neck is coming off for sure. I think I can probably safely crank this now. Lovely stuff. So that was really clean. Uh, there is a little bit of, a uh, little bit of sandboard on there, but not so much that I'm worried about. This neck has not come off before. I'm pretty confident of that. The reason I think that is because mine are the first uh, marks here. If it's that easy to see, but. Mine are the first sort of burn marks here. Some slight scalding marks, but I'm not too worried about that. It's kind of inevitable. And uh, there's no there's no sort of veneering or anything like that on this one. So that looks really, really good. And on the body, in the neck block, it's very, very clean. There's no veneers. Some nice markings there. Again, you know, the heat sticks did uh, burn it a little bit. You know, ultimately it did its job. It released really nicely. Um, that is a little bit of a bummer there, but what we might be able to do is just gently peel it off here. We're going at a really super shallow angle um, so that we don't carve into the fretboard extension itself. It's really gentle. Really gentle. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. It's exactly what we want. Super, super clean there. And so what we'll do is we'll just glue this back on here. And we've got some very, very useful little rosette lines to guide us along the way with that and we'll just sort of clamp that down there and that'll be beautiful and all will be well with the world lay that guy down in there beautiful and then we'll just put this little bit of perspex over there in place and we'll just leave that to dry. Now we've got the uh, neck off. I'm just gonna scrape a bit of this old glue off, being careful not to remove any uh, wood unnecessarily, albeit we're gonna have to uh, veneer this anyway.
We're now just cleaning up the glue that's on the uh, the sides, just to go get our mating surface surface as good as possible. Let's just give that a bit of sand with 240 grit paper. While we're here, I'm just gonna scrape this binding just to clean it up a little bit. Just get that glue off there. Awesome, <clears throat> this is all very lovely. So now, we're very close to the, per, the point of just doing our, our neck reset, which essentially just involves us putting the neck in here, getting some sandpaper, running it along the back, and just tipping that neck back until such time that a straight edge along the frets touches the top of the bridge. <laughs> 